What's going on collectors? In this video, we're gonna talk about my top five favorite graphic novels in the past 10 years. Here we go. And of course, if you like what you see, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below and leave some comments. I love responding to you all. So in this video, I do want to talk about graphic novel. I love graphic novels. I love comic books, but you know, graphic novels are an extension of the comic book medium and uh, they don't always get the same type of respect and love that they should get. So I wanted to talk about my favorite five graphic novels from the past 10 years. There is a whole slew of graphic novels I'm sure I have not read, so this is not a definitive list by any means. This is solely based on what I have read, so uh, do not skewer me too hard if you disagree with my list. Um, these are just a handful of books that I have read and thoroughly enjoy. So without further ado, let's start with book number one. My first book, right on the cusp of uh, 10 years, is released in 2014. It is Seconds by Brian Lee O'Malley. Uh, Dathan Fairbairn did the colors, and it is about uh, Kate, who is the main character in th this uh, book here. She owns a restaurant, and uh, she regrets a lot of things in her life. And essentially, she finds in her restaurant, uh, in the basement of the restaurant, there's mushrooms there, and if she writes her past mistakes in a notebook, eats a mushroom, goes to sleep, she can relive the past and try to change things. And of course, going along with that comes with a whole slew of problems as well. So the whole idea of the book, uh, which is, you know, Brian Lee O'Malley, he's known for doing Scott Pilgrim series predominantly. Um, this is his third graphic novel. The artwork itself is, you know, rather cartoony, but it's very serious in the same uh, regard and Nathan Fairbairn's colors is easily this is one of my favorite colored books it is just so wonderfully drawn and, and the artistry is wonderful the colors are great on it uh, but the story itself uh, is just very personal because we all have regrets that we have in life and we all have to try and push through them and this book really does uh, focus on a lot of humanity despite its fantastical nature so this book here is uh, the earliest book on my list at 2014, and we're going to go to the newer books as we go along. So this isn't like a top five, but it, it's my five. So my next book here, and I do not want to get into any sort of political debate here, I just want to talk about this book, is The Mueller Report, a graphic novel. Uh, this is done by Shannon Wheeler and Steve Dewin. Uh, Shannon Wheeler, you may know as the artist and creator of Too Much Coffee Man, which is a series I thoroughly enjoy. And this book here, uh, the reason why I enjoy it, and it's in my top five, is because I'm a big fan of reading about politics and I'm big into the news and all that. Um, but it takes the Mueller report itself and really simplifies it in a graphic novel format. And regardless of your take on the, the report or whether you're Democrat or Republican or whatever you may be. I'm Canadian. I have no skin in the game. Uh, it's a fun read and it is humorous and the cartoons themselves uh, in, in classic Shannon Wheeler fashion are uh, rather... <laughs> um, they're obscure, they're obtuse, but they're also very poignant. Um, this book is just a great read and it takes all that political jargon and the things that really bore somebody and ends up making something that's boring exciting and in the book too they do reference uh, the pages on the Mueller report so if you did actually want to reference what is happening on the book in the actual report you're welcome to read it i mean this is a few years ago now this is 2020 so this is literally a dated book so to speak um, but it's still quite a fun read and i thoroughly would recommend anybody who just enjoys the political landscape like i do to take a book like this and, and just really enjoy what it has to offer and what graphic novels can do for the real world medium it, it does offer a whole different perspective on something that is so literal on on pages and, and it's legal jargon really um, done in graphic novel format so definitely a very enjoyable book carrying on the uh, legal hype train uh, this book here was released in 2020 uh, it is the band book club and this book here is by Kim Hyun Suk uh, and Ryan Estrada they wrote it and the artwork is by Ko Kyung Ju uh, and the band book club is about South Korea in the 80s and long story short South Korea back in the 80s and or really they have a very interesting history of the country itself but it was ran by an authoritarian military dictatorship in that time and so the gist of the book here is that you know they had books that were banned in the country that you could not read and very simpler simple books like hamlet the scarlet letter um, books that we all take for granted you couldn't read that in the country and the whole story of this here is these university students um, are 
they have a club where they are trying to read these books and trying to fight the oppressive government that they are in. And uh, a lot of the, it, it's essentially based on true events. The characters have been renamed to protect the identities of the people in there. Um, but it is a very historically accurate take on what South Korea was in the 80s. And it's a very honest, raw take on it as well. There's humorous moments and there's very human moments in there. But it, it ultimately, it's a, it's for what it is trying to look like on the cover, and you see this, you're like, oh, it's a simple uh, manga artwork. Uh, it is a very serious, dark book at times. And I feel that a book like this here um, can easily be overshowered just on the cover of it, especially with people in Americanized culture that look at this and just think it's maybe children's artwork. Because that, that's kind of the general feeling when uh, people who do not read graphic novels or understand the manga artwork, they look at this and think it's really child's play, um, unfortunately. But this book is chock full of uh, serious notes. There's a lot of uh, Korean history in here that I learned about that I was not familiar with. Um, it's a very exciting book. Uh, it, it is a relatively quick read as well, um, so you don't have to delve too much time into it, but the thinking, the time that you spend afterwards thinking about it and how close that a lot of, um, you know, you can think of schools that ban books uh, currently in North America, and you can kind of just feel it relate a little bit to what's happening here. And while the, you know, the, these, these independent school boards don't act or aren't a dictatorship, you can kind of get a sense and parallels between the two countries and how things can really go off the rails really quick. So Banned Book Club is on my list because it is just a really seriously good book. This next book is, uh, I think, if I had to choose a favorite out of these lists here, I guess this one is my favorite. Um, Seconds is, they all are my favorite for various different reasons. I like Seconds for the fantastical nature. I like the last book I'm going to show for how Canadian it is and its realism. But I really love this book because of the artwork, because of the story, because of the humanity, the lack of humanity, the the parallels, the, the, the let's just talk about Barry Windsor Smith's monsters. This book here, it is a tome of just beauty. And this book here was apparently supposed to be a Hulk story. And if that was the case, holy smokes, the Hulk we knew would be a completely different character. Um, essentially, this book takes place in the 60s, and the main character named Bailey, who was the monster here you see on the cover, um, really isn't the main character. He is the focus of the book, but it's about everything that goes on around him. There is the ideas of his family, his work, um, their histories, the past of, of all these people that are involved. Um, this is a book filled of regret, filled of drama, filled of just pure unadulterated horror. Um, there's a few pages in here that I had to put the book down where I was like, this is too much for me to be reading at 10 o'clock at night. I need to go to bed. Um, so th this touches upon you know, the darkest corners of humanity, but also still tries to shine a light on humanity. And by the end of this book, there's just it's, uh, dripping with beautiful human moments in there. And by human moments, I, I say everything's been human a lot already in this video. And what I mean by human moments is that things that make you happy that humans can be good and that there is um, goodness in people and that there is altruistic feelings out there. This book, well, it goes through a lot of unfortunate depravity to really focus on and, and show you the story of, of what the monsters are. Uh, it does bring it all out at the end. And, and it does throughout the, the book too. There's still little pieces of hope throughout and things that tie each other together that make this book just so impactful. And, and in a way, it's an absolutely beautifully horrific story. And I use horrific in the most kindest of terms uh, because horrific in this sense is that you it, it literally is monsters like not this guy being a monster but humans being monsters but there's also the shining light that is throughout this book as well and that the title being monsters were not all monsters and really to see the the parallels of what you the reader are and what uh, Barry Windsor Smith is trying to show in this book is uh it, it's a tough pill to swallow but it is absolutely worth the investment getting in there and of course barry windsor smith his artwork is 
by far some of the greatest artwork you'll ever see in this medium. Um, I, like, again, here's some of the artworks again. Um, so I really recommend Monsters. I get not for the faint of heart, but really powerful storytelling. And if you can get through it, um, you're going to have a lot of reflection in there. I mean, as a quick critique, there is some fantastical elements that were kind of, um, I felt, placed in here that seemed unnecessary um but i feel that is a minor issue and doesn't really take away from the whole uh the book as a whole uh, I, I when i read after i read this book i you know had to google what people thought of it and uh a lot of the critiques were based on that and i feel that while they are founded they are not the biggest they're not the be all end all of what this book actually has to offer so would recommend monsters absolutely beautiful book so this last book here is from 2022, and I'm sure there's a couple books that I have uh, not read in 2023 and this year um, to make the list, but um, this book just absolutely wow. The Little Slice of Canadiana, it is Ducks, Two Years in the Oil Sands by Kate Beaton. And this book here, it is uh, a story uh, by Kate Beaton, of Kate Beaton, um, where she leaves her home in Nova Scotia to go to the oil sands in Alberta to work and pay off her student loans. And this book here, the story is very dramatic and impactful. Um, again, I'll use the human <laughs> term here. Uh, it is a female working in an entirely male-dominated sphere. And the whole aspect of this there's a lot of terrible things that happen in the oil stands but the book isn't trying to entirely focus on that either because kate tries to show that there's good people in the oil sands that get grouped together and there's good and there's bad and you know there's the idea of capitalism attacking th these people the, they're they're destroying the oil sands the, the book's called ducks because of the disaster in 2008 where uh, hundreds of ducks were killed in uh, an oil or in a, in a lake so it is a tribute to them um the whole idea is that these people who live in alberta are trapped there at face value you hear capitalism and you go oh they're fighting against the man that's you know very elementary in terms of its thinking but it is much deeper than that because it's about the people the men and women who are in the oil sands fighting for their futures fighting for their their lives in some regard fighting against the man but it's beyond just the oil companies it's the idea that you know you're in student debt and you have to the only way to get further is to work your way out and put up with sexual harassment and abuse and be uh, complicit and uniform with how all these men and women are supposed to be in this book she's not trying to uh She's not trying to downplay anything that happens. Everything that happens in this book is very severe, but she almost gives reasons to why these terrible things happen in this book um, and what brings people to do the awful things that they do. And some of these are just, you know, people are going to be awful. Um, but on the other hand, she also shows that people are trying to be good too. And it's this interesting contrast in the story and in the narrative where you get you, know, you flip one page and something awful happens you flip another page and something incredible happens and there's like beauty in the darkness in this book and the whole book itself and the artwork that she does um it's very uh almost it is monochrome more or less there's a little bit of grays going on in it but the grays that are in there is kind of the overall feel of the book it is a gray area the whole idea that the oil sands are not good or bad um is is that middle ground it's not black or white it's it's right there in the middle and and I think that with Ducks, she really strikes home what makes Canada interesting, um, what drives Canadians to places like this here, why places like here turn people sour, to put it lightly, uh, why there are good people in here, and also how people can evolve from this. And, you know, the last page of this book here uh, was after reading you know, all 400 some odd pages of it, that very final uh, page that she did it was just absolute gut punch in a way that was just like I can't believe like as I got so involved in this book by the end and I almost became like Kate did such a good job explaining the story that I almost felt like I was part of that with her and then by the end I got that shock that uh, she got at the end of the book and it was just kind of like you took me out of it like of course this is bad say that all to say ducks is an incredible story and also one of the big books that you should be reading right now one of my favorite books of the uh past 10 years so that's all i had to say about this series here i don't know what you guys think about me talking about graphic novels let me know at the comments below i can definitely talk about more uh don't forget like and subscribe uh don't forget to 
click this button here and subscribe as well and i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching mm -hmm.